Thanks for the uh, kind introduction there. Um, my name is Mike Ashmore and uh, I'm the uh, product lead for our geo addressing portfolio here at uh, Precisely. Um, I'm also the subject matter expert for the uh, for the business here. And what I'd like to do is start talking about um, the nature of the core problem that we face with addressing around why is it get expensive and how do we deal with that? And let me start by saying that to understand uh, really the cost of bad addresses, we have to go right back to the beginning of the creation of addresses and understand what they're used for. I know we never think about that, but what is an address used for? Addresses have always been part of the problem of finding a location, uh, but they've be become essential uh, to the understanding identity. Um, this actually started with the uh, census, where governments needed to understand the demographics of their citizens. So what they went and did was collect information, uh, and the way they ensured completeness and minimal duplication was to ask who lived in an address uh, on a particular day. And all organizations, um, as they've digitally transformed over the decades, addresses have become increasingly uh, a way to identify people along, of course, with the name. So given the centrality of address to identity, uh, address is therefore needed for most kinds of services. Now, these services aren't just, hey, I wanted to get an Amazon delivery, which of course we all use it for and appreciate. It really gets foundational. Um, voting always comes to my mind. You can't vote unless you're, you have an address, especially here in, um, uh, many of the countries that we on this uh, 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 in this community live in. Uh, we can't get driver's licenses. We can't get credit cards. We can't buy houses. We can't get jobs. And it's sort of ironic that um, you can't get government benefits either. And it might be your economic status that prevents you from being able to uh, get an address that, um, and you need those government benefits. In fact, there are very few services out there that don't require an address. I can really only think of um, Internet TV streaming services uh, that, where they don't ask you for an address. Um, but ironically, you need the address to get the credit card to pay for the service. Um, and as a little aside, uh, in countries like the United States, uh, the consequence of not having the address is that they don't tax you correctly all the time and that's a unique thing in the US because the tax jurisdictions are very small and uh, getting an accurate location is uh, highly um, needed to uh, perform the correct taxing. So how do things go wrong? Um, think of an address as being a multi-field label and it's a highly fault tolerant multi-field label in that you can get bits of it wrong and it will still work people will still deliver envelopes and packages to your door, even if you get things wrong. And it's been developed over several centuries uh, for human utilization. But this year happens to be the 60th anniversary of the IBM mainframe. In fact, I think it's around about now that it was first launched, maybe the beginning of April. And um, addresses started to get put into that those IBM mainframes and those computer systems right at the beginning. It was one of the first data types to ever be uh, stored on mass in computer systems. Um, and frankly, the multi-field label simply doesn't fit very well into a computer system. So we can start looking at the kinds of things that go wrong. What we see a lot is data changes. So, um, the actual addresses change on a fairly frequent basis. I'm not talking about new addresses here or gone away addresses or people moving. I'm talking about the address strings, those fields, those labels that we use actually change. Postal codes change, street names change. We're experiencing a lot of that here in the United States right now as we memorialize different people in history in the street names. Systems make errors. The computer systems don't always handle diacritics or particular characters that might be coming through. Um, languages and scripts can be a problem uh, to certain computer systems. 
One of the biggest contributors to what goes wrong, though, is that users make errors, spelling mistakes, incomplete details, misfielding of information. Um, and frankly, misfielding happens as we transfer from one computer system to another computer system. It happens all the time and one of the most frequent things we see uh, from our customers. Finally, one of one thing that always tends to happen is incomplete information. So you just don't have all the information that you need in order to get to identify that correct address. And we end up having to fill that in. And often we can, but often we can't too. And so we, um, we, we talk about how to fix that uh, all the time. So as we start to think about what's at stake, there are three key things that really strike us as across the industries that we serve uh, that impact their businesses when addresses go wrong. The first is the reduced operational efficiency. We see this in people costs, material costs, and, and uh, simply the extension of time that is required to deal correctly with situations because we didn't think about the importance of an address up front. And we don't think about it because, of course, we all live at one. We assume it never changes. And we assume that there's a national registry of addresses, which, of course, there isn't. The second key thing that happens is we damage our customer relationships. All businesses tend to focus on having a great customer relationship. And addresses tend to impact that greatly, whether that be about um, getting too much mail because, from the same organization because we didn't dedupe properly because we didn't understand that they were uh, our single customer, or because simply the thing never got done, the product never got delivered. And the final area is, we'll call it increased return rate. Now, while a lot of businesses don't deliver things or deliver people or deliver services to addresses that they sell to with, where it's needed, very frequently they do deal with it. And it's the commonest thing. And we call it out separately here because, frankly, it is one of the single most costly items um, to deal with. The cost of returned, whether it be returned goods or returned people, is staggeringly high. But you can't really understand the cost of addresses without talking about the individual address uh, use cases and businesses that uh, organizations are in. So let's examine a couple of those right now. The first is let's talk about e-commerce and hyperlocal delivery. For those of you who don't know, hyperlocal delivery is where you're delivering in a very short distance, three to five miles uh, maximum distance from where the pickup location was. I'll leave you to read the stats. I won't, uh, I won't bore you with that. But some of these stats are really quite staggering uh, to me. And I'll pull out the two that I find most um, fascinating. The first is that one in five of all hyperlocal deliveries are cancelled or late due to address location problems. That is an astonishingly high figure. The second thing that I find astonishingly high is about cart abandonment. Now, cart abandonment on our digital shopping carts is very high, but there's all kinds of reasons why It'll be, hey, I was just looking for what the final price was going to be, or I wanted to put it in there so I didn't forget about it and I could show my partner, or, 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 there's lots of reasons. For 4% of the abandonment due to be, due to problematic addresses, I find that an astonishing number. Let's talk about insurance. <clears throat> we provide a lot of services to the insurance industry. Um, that's, a lot of underwriting because property and casualty insurance really requires a, a detailed understanding of location to be able to understand what the aggregated risk is in that area. We've worked with something like the top 50 largest insurance companies in the US and around the world. We know from conversations we've had from them that they're total revenue loss from bad addresses is an incredible 20 percent getting it wrong really costs money next industry that i'll talk about is the prop tech industry so property 
um, commercial or residential, um, servicing it, selling it, renting it. It's all needed to be able to, um, addresses are needed to be able to do the correct modeling, to do the correct analysis. And um, when the address information is missing, an incredible 56% of uh, the information that they deal with is bad. And I find that just staggering. They can't get hold of high quality, clean information. Thank you.